Hello, this is Jason. I'm back with another walk and talk. And it is another beautiful day. I'm getting a earlier start. It's only it's it's 420. 420 YOLO. <laughs> uh, and someone asked for me to talk about why I don't game anymore. So I'll talk about that first. And I am going to go on a longer route today since I got some more sunlight. I'm gonna go the long way to the to the bench in the park down Brushy Creek Trail. But we're gonna go up here and go left instead of right. So taking the scenic route. <clears throat> so why I stopped gaming? Well, there's more than one reason. Like, with Call of Duty, like if I'd have just played Call of Duty, stayed playing Call of Duty, never played any other games, only made, uh, you know, TGFS videos, every week I'd probably have like 3 million subscribers on my main channel right now I've been making more on YouTube than I make for my job but I would be I would be clinically insane because Call of Duty I was so frustrated and burned out on Call of Duty <clears throat> I just couldn't do it anymore and that was probably you know five years ago I did play the latest like MW2 when it came out a little bit but nothing not putting any amount of time like I used to I remember doing like the 24 hour live streams where I'd prestige do a full prestige in a day. <laughs> uh, I was total Call of Duty junkie. And, you know, at the beginning, I was having fun. Especially the first MW2. I love that game. And even, like, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, those were both good. MW3 was good. And that's... That's about where things, after that, when things started going downhill for me. I think Advanced Warfare was the first one where I'm just like, this sucks. <laughs> Everyone was like flying through the air and it just wasn't, wasn't like it used to be. And I just didn't really enjoy playing it much after that. And when, you know, MW2, the newest one, came out, at least everyone was, you know, boots on the ground type of game. But by then, I was just so sick of it. I couldn't take it. And then I got into Destiny. Played Destiny as much as I... I played Destiny actually more than I played Call of Duty. Destiny and Destiny 2, it was like... 10,000 hours or something because there was like a time wasted on Destiny website that showed how much time you played and I had to have played Destiny like more than Call of Duty I think I played it longer too because I really played Call of Duty from like mm, 20 2009 I think that's when NW2 came out I started playing Call of Duty like right before MW2 came out. I had fiddled around on like World at War and uh, in the first Modern Warfare game. But I remember I only played those for like a few months before MW2 came out. So MW2 was like my first from launch date. Uh, Call of Duty game. <laughs> These guys are putting in the fiber. <sighs> I 
How long will it be till I get Google Fiber? <laughs> how how long? A month? Two months? Probably around two months. Really? Awesome. You said two months. That's awesome. Google Fiber about two months. <sighs> Awesome, these guys are my heroes. My heroes. <laughs> oh man, I've been waiting my whole life for Google Fiber, and now that it's coming, I probably won't even live here more than a year until I sell my house and move to Bangkok. And that's all depending if uh, my trip in December for a month long stay in Bangkok goes well, but. I have high hopes, high hopes. But I did just post a video recently that expectations don't always match reality. So I am open to the possibility that I will not like it. We'll see. All right, so yeah, Modern Warfare 2, loved the game and even you know, through those other ones up to Advanced Warfare. It's all good. So, then Destiny, and Destiny was just as frustrating. In the early days, well, I can't even say that. It, it's been frustrating since launch. There's always been frustrating things about Destiny. <clears throat> Especially, like, in the beginning, you had to do the raid to get the armor and and the drop rates sucked so yeah there's it's a whole different different kind of frustration with destiny but I did have a lot of fun playing it but I was just at, at the end it's just like doing the same thing over and over they had the same seasonal events, bake some cookies. It's like, get out of here. Come up with an original idea. And all, all the, you know, they would come out with a, a new expansion and it would be like the same areas and maps, but you're just like running backwards through it instead of running forwards through it. Like <laughs> totally reusing the same areas. And it just seemed like they really got lazy. Especially they had some other games that they were working on. It seemed like they really put Destiny on the back burner and they just weren't, they weren't uh, putting their heart in it anymore. So, got sick of it. And so that's just kind of getting sick and burnt out of the games. But also from like a physical standpoint, my hands started hurting you know just from playing like a couple hours i used to be able to do 24 hour playing sessions and my hands would feel like cramped then but in the past in a couple years just playing like a couple hours would make my knuckles hurt and they get sore it's almost like arthritis <laughs> i'm getting old <laughs> And I do, I am susceptible to gout, which is a form of arthritis. So I am probably going to have like rheumatoid arthritis. And it's probably the early, early signs of it. Because even now, like when I'm, you know, like wringing out clothes or something, like something that takes a, a forceful grip, it hurts, hurts my knuckles. <coughs> and I play with the controller and, you know, squeezing use the paddles so you have to squeeze the controller to hit the buttons on the back and my hands weren't weren't liking it and there'd be so many days where I'd in the morning I could barely move my fingers and I work on a computer like my actual job that is making me money I have to use it to type on a keyboard and I was having a hard time some days. You know, it wasn't every day. And it was mostly, you know, longer play sessions. It was probably four or five hour sessions that it would 
caused that but you know still still happening <laughs> so looks like the kids are getting out of school hey kids you want some candy <laughs> Big ol' herd of kids right there. Look at that big ol' herd of kids. <clears throat> so, that's another reason. And, I mean, that's probably the main reasons. My hands weren't liking it, and I was getting sick of the games. I'd tried some other games, just dabbled, but... I was just getting tired of it. So, so no more gaming. And even along the way, you know, you could tell that I was, in the early days, it was all Call of Duty. And then as time went on, started making like a food video once a month. I started making, a, you know, other, other types of content you can see i was trying to put some feelers out to see if people would be interested in me making different kinds of videos <clears throat> and they were in the beginning <clears throat> up until about it's probably like 2018 i forget when the big advertiser revolt was but there was a thing about advertisers didn't want their ads being put on like a certain type of content so they started cracking down on like foul language and when my bread and butter was making a series called you know TGFS and they were cracking down on images of guns so all those videos had an image of a gun right on the thumbnail like all of them were like instantly demonetized so there was no motivation to spend you know it would take me 20 hours sometimes to make those videos like just going and getting the gameplay and having to get a good score and then even though the the graphics level were very elementary. I still had to go make some drawings and make the stupid voices <laughs> of the trolling unicorn. And in every video I was doing, uh, like I was taking all the comments, so I had a tool that would scrape all the comments from the last video and I would put them in a, put them in the video that scrolled across the video. So that, that took a long time. It took a long time to render, because you know, back in the day, any kind of graphics on screen with the computers that we had, it's pretty slow. I remember it taking like a full day to render a video. So it was just a lot of work. And then once that happened with the whole advertiser thing, Google, they stopped, they would instantly demonetize my videos so I couldn't make any money from them. And then, at that, around that same time, just overall views on my channel dropped like crazy. Where I was getting like 30 to 50,000 views on a video. And after that whole advertiser thing, I would get like three to 5,000 views a video. It was like a 10x drop. And I, you know, nothing about what I was doing was really changing. And it was just that YouTube was not promoting channels where there was any kind of, you know, even slightly offensive content. So it looks through, it can, when you upload the video, it automatically transcribes the video. 
and it looks through the whole video for swear words or any other phrases that it thinks are inappropriate and that was that was pretty much every video I was uploading at the time <laughs> and then it just looks at your overall channel and I've got all these videos that are you know this gun effing sucks and it says guns on guns on my video it says swear words in the titles of my video I've got guns on my thumbnails and they're like yeah we're not gonna recommend this channel to anybody and they stopped promoting like it used to be you subscribe to a channel and when you logged in to YouTube on on the you know youtube.com homepage there would be all the videos of all the people that you subscribe to there so you know there was much more chance for one of my subscribers to see that I uploaded a video and it's right there on their homepage but then it switched to YouTube recommended videos and it would recommend videos of things that you weren't even subscribed to. And then it just stopped recommending my videos altogether, especially since I was posting different content. So then it became very uh, negative thing to post a variety of content because if YouTube recommended like one of my eating videos and you skipped over it, you know, you saw the video on your homepage, but didn't watch it then they would stop recommending any of the videos oh, they're getting this road up here finished me yeah, they're getting this road in up here when I walk faster it's uh, bouncing the camera I can feel it bouncing Whew, I can see the moon and this is nice Nice new sidewalk, very wide sidewalks. Every sidewalk in the city should be like this. So, yeah, it was a lot of the changes that YouTube made, and even just Call of Duty videos in general, because there's they're shooting games that YouTube wouldn't recommend them and views dropped and then I just kind of quit posting altogether took a break because it was so frustrating you're like I'm doing the same thing I was doing before but I'm getting 10 times less views and my most popular videos are demonetized so I was getting like 100 times less revenue where at you know at the peak when I was doing machinima and posting videos on my channel, I was probably making like uh, two to three thousand dollars a month. So that's like a pretty, pretty good wage for my efforts. <laughs> Even though I was having fun, it's still it's it's work. I don't think a lot of people understand that you know maybe play Call of Duty one one or two hours a day like man I would love to do this for my job and make content yeah you try it out so where you're playing Call of Duty like eight hours a day and spending like at least four hours a day making videos and editing and doing all that stuff so and then plus I was I was working a full-time job already my real job I, mean, I, was, I was just getting burnt out and then when the revenue dropped then it was I was making like 
$250 to $300 a month for the same effort that I was making $2,500 to $3,000 a month. So that was just like, well, this is over. <laughs> uh, and now I'm making like $250 to $500 a year. <laughs> so making videos now is complete, completely uh, has no monetary incentive to me whatsoever. I get practically nothing. In these walk and talk videos, this channel's not even monetized. This is where I post the most videos and I get zero dollars a year from this. And uh, you know, everything's not about money. I make these just because it's kind of like a therapy therapy for me. <laughs> like one of the main main things about uh, going to a therapist, like a therapist really doesn't do much. They just sit there and listen. Like the main benefits of going to a therapist is just talking and getting things off your chest and, you know, getting stuff out in the open. And that makes you think about it, just the process of trying to get your mind to bring up stuff that, that might be weighing on you that you, you don't even, you don't even realize that is uh, building up inside you. Just start talking. And even if you're talking to yourself, which that's what I'm pretty much doing, I know there's, I'm talking like, I'm talking to an audience, which I am, a very, very small audience, but there are some people that are listening. <laughs> My mom watches these every once in a while. <clears throat> and that was uh, another thing why I really stopped making videos the, the way that I used to. Like, my videos used to be pretty uh, raunchy. <laughs> and it was a combination of YouTube demonetizing raunchy content, foul words, and, uh, you know, I made, if you've watched my videos back in the day, you know what kind of videos I made <laughs> and that's part of the reason why they were popular you know talking about uh I'm not even gonna say it <laughs> because my mom watches my videos my grandma you know that's when when my f channel started getting popular and then my family's like what you have 200,000 people that are watching your videos let me see what these videos are and same with people at work, like, uh, you know, co-workers and, that I have to go see all, all these people from in real life, you know, got out like, you know, one of my close friends knew I had a channel, people that I actually game with in Call of Duty, and they might have mentioned it to one other person, or I, I might have mentioned it to someone, and they tell someone, and before I know it, like, almost... Everyone at work knows, all my whole family knows, <laughs> and they're watching. My little cousins that are, at the time, were like 10, 12 years old. <clears throat> so I couldn't talk about the things that I was talking about before. I had to clean it up, both from a YouTube demonetization perspective and from uh, everyone that I know in real life is now watching perspective. <laughs> uh, so I went back and like privated a bunch of videos and deleted videos that I didn't want them to be able to go back and see that I made. So, you know, like the Road to Forever Alone series. If you know what that's about. If you know, you know. <laughs> uh, mm. Oh, some refreshing tea. 
so really it was a lot of different things. But I think that about sums it up. So now you know. We still got what's that been 25 minutes? So we still got some time to talk about some other things. Let's see if I can come up with another topic to talk about besides Bitcoin or Bangkok. <laughs> I really want to, I really want to talk about those things. I really do. Today was kind of a flat day. So it's not a big exciting day to talk about it anyway. <clears throat> so I won't. But let me let me uh, search my mind and see if I can come up with something else. <laughs> Feels like this camera's flopping around more than it used to. <sighs> There's a big skeleton looking over the wall over there. <sighs> See it? See it? Let's talk about daylight wasting time, which is what I call the time that we switch to when we're not on daylight savings time. It's daylight wasting time. And it's so stupid. I hate it. I think everyone hates it, except for farmers that wake up at four in the morning. I, I wanna have some sunlight at four in the morning when I wake up. I need to have it to go out and feed the chickens at 4 a.m. <laughs> so we're all suffering with the sun being down right at five o'clock when we get out off work so that a farmer could feed his chickens with some sunlight at 4 a.m. Some BS, man. <laughs> Who else feels the way I do? Is there anyone that actually likes it getting dark at 5 o'clock p.m. and it getting light at like 4 a.m.? I don't even know when the sun rises. Let's ask, let's ask Gemini. And I have been using Gemini because I got this uh, Google Pixel 9 XL Pro, whatever it is. And it came with like it's either one or two years free of Gemini Advanced, which is Google's version of Chat GPT. <clears throat> so I was paying 20 bucks a month for Chat GPT Plus, but since I got this, I canceled it. And it's okay. It's not as good as Chat GPT, especially on thumbnails like the thumbnails that I've been posting on this like the last few Bitcoin videos those were all made by ChatGPT I tried to get Gemini to make them and it will only make like square square pictures I can't use a square picture for a thumbnail and I'm like no I want it in 16 by 9 aspect ratio okay here it is in 16 by 9 aspect ratio spits out another square picture like that is not 16 by 9 I want it 1920 by 1080 okay here it is in 1920 by 1080 boom another square picture I'm like Gemini you're an idiot <laughs> so I can't get away from chat GPT until it can understand what 16 by 9 aspect ratio means and create a, a thumbnail. And it's not as good at putting like words on the pictures. Like ChatGPT messes up sometimes too, where it'll misspell words. But it's a lot better than Gemini. But as far as just asking stuff and getting information, I think Gemini is actually more up-to-date and relevant. It uses more recent Google searches where ChatGPT's information seems to be like you know, six months old. 
can't t- talk about things that are current. <clears throat> and now I forget what I was even gonna ask Jim and I when why I pulled the Jim and I out to ask her something. <laughs> what were we even talking about? Man, I'm losing it. Losing my marbles. Hold on, let me think. Oh yeah. Daylight savings time. Oh, I was gonna ask what time the sunrise. Hey Jim and I, what uh time does the sunrise? Pretty slow. The sun will rise in Round Rock, Texas at 6.52 a.m. tomorrow morning. Okay. I hope this helps. So it's not so it's not 4 a.m. Alright, it's 6.52. And if we didn't have the rollback, I guess it would be 7.52, which would actually be perfect for me because I start my day at 8 a.m. But farmer's gotta feed his chickens at six or 7 (laughs) a.m. That's, I'm pretty sure that's the whole reason why we roll our clocks back anyway. Is it had to do with farmers. And I don't think farmers are that powerful anymore. And there's not even that many of them because it's all like industrialized farms now. I'm sure they got like floodlights. They don't need sunlight to feed the chickens. All the chickens are crammed into huge warehouse barns. <laughs> there's like so few free-range chickens anymore just a big factory all our foods factory farmed individual farmers barely exist anymore so why are we rolling our clocks back for chickens in a warehouse it's archaic archaic have the sun come up at 8 a.m. and go down at like 6 p.m. be perfect for me, so they should make a law to make that happen <laughs> because that's how I like it. I think most people agree. Tell me if you agree. <sighs> Let's see what the uh, most recent information. Gemini has is what is the most recent information you have on current events I can access pretty up to date information which means I don't really have a knowledge cut off date however it's important to keep in mind that my knowledge about current events is always limited by the time it takes for new information to be processed and made available to me so while I can try my best to provide you with the most recent information I have it's always a good idea to check dedicated news sources for the very latest updates on current events. See, that's cool. And when I asked ChatGPT, let's ask let's ask ChatGPT the same thing. I still got still got them on my phone. What's the latest information you have on current events? Take a minute. Why is it not talking? What's the latest information you have on current events? In recent U.S. election news, Donald Trump won the presidential race against Kamala Harris. His campaign focused on criticizing the Biden-Harris administration's middle All right, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> well, it knows about the election. Let's see. What do you know about current events besides the election? Beyond 
beyond the U.S. election, several major global events are unfolding. In the Middle East, the Israel-Gaza conflict has intensified, with significant casualties reported in Gaza due to airstrikes. Meanwhile, Israel has also conducted airstrikes in Lebanon. All right, I don't want to talk about that either. either. Debbie Downer. <laughs> What's some uh, current events that are good news? Some happy information. I guess it did. Guess nothing. All we have is bad news. All we have is bad news. All right, I'm done talking to them. Them bots. It's more Google Fiber people. Sidewalk closed. Sidewalk closed. All right, I'll walk in the uh, in the grass. Walk in the road. A lot of water here. I see all these pipes. I use that to pull the fiber. So they have one crew that goes through and digs the trenches, which is that little white stripe in the road. That's where they put the, the little tunnel that they pull the fiber through. One crew goes through and lays that. Then they have someone comes behind them that actually has the fiber optic cable. Those were the guys that were over by my house. They're actually pulling the fiber through. Multi, multi team operation. And then there's probably another crew. Like that's the, the main trunk lines that are getting laid right to the developments. And then there's a junction box outside the development. And they'll probably have another crew come in that pulls all the individual smaller fiber lines to the house, house level. What is all this, man? It's like concrete. It's going to leave a big stain. Who's going to clean this up? <sighs> and Google Fiber has speeds up to eight gigabytes up and down now which that's just ridiculous <laughs> totally ridiculous you, you'd have to have 10 gig network adapters to you know every device in your house to even be able to make use of it at a at an individual device level like that's really only needed if you have like more than eight people connecting to the internet at a time because most connections on devices these days are gigabit gigabit connection and even wi-fi really like getting a gigabit per second wireless connection is really good but so i'd say like you have eight to ten people in your house connecting at one time that's like the minimum that would be required to justify an eight gigabit connection but I, I do have a 10 gig NIC on my little computer that I use to access Usenet for downloads so that one device on my network be able to access it and I'd be able to download things to that one device super fast but right now I have like five six hundred gigabit down and that's really even fast enough <laughs> uh, so I think one or two gig it's plenty fast like you can get the main thing is the price like i think the one gig up and down google fiber i believe is 60 dollars a month and for my 
600 down, 40 up, I'm paying, I believe, $100 a month. So it's $40 a month cheaper for better internet, less latency, and higher download and upload speeds. So that's the main, main attraction to Google. Not so much for me, like the 8 gigabit speeds. I mean, that sounds cool, but you can't really make use of it with only having one person in the house. <clears throat> but I'm very glad they are coming. <sighs> Alright, so we talked about Google Fiber. Talked about daylight wasting time, my quit gaming. Um, what other topics? I remember asking in videos long ago when I was making these, what kind of uh, topics, I would like some topic suggestions, things to talk about. That was one thing that made, when I used to do walk and talk live streams, it was so much easier. Like the quality of the videos was much worse because <laughs> streaming around here is, I don't have the strongest cellular connections. <clears throat> but being able to have people come into the chat and ask you real time questions about what you think about certain things, what do you think about what's going on in the world. That was much more easier than trying to come up with stuff on your own. Especially when I'm so focused these days on just a few topics, which I'm sure you're aware of. I won't even say what those are, but I know you know. <laughs> That's all I think about. Just another thing is weight loss. So I'm current weight, 265 pounds. So that is, was that 85 pounds down from my max, my max fattiness. As so I was 350.1 pounds, 350.1 was my all time high which is my personal record. And also uh, the family, the family record. No one in my family on either side, I don't think. Maybe, maybe on my uh, Phillips side. I remember having, it was either a second cousin or an uncle. It wasn't an uncle. I think it was like a second cousin or something. His name was Kurt. I remember he was really fat. But I don't know if he topped out 350 pounds because he was shorter than me. I think I might have topped him too. I need to retie my shorts. They feel loose. So, but I, but I did like plateau in my weight loss, even doing those fast, I would fast from Monday to Friday and only eat from Friday night to Sunday at midnight. And, you know, I, I did, I would drop some weight, but then on the three days that I was eating, it would kind of go back up to where I was. <laughs> so even not eating for four and a half out of seven days a week. I wasn't losing weight. Plus walking six miles a day. It's like, what do I have to do, man? I can remember when I was in my twenties, if I wanted to lose weight, you know, I, if I walked six miles in my twenties, I would lose 20 pounds. 
it just seemed like the weight would just disappear if I made any effort whatsoever. Whereas now, it seems like I'm putting in so much effort and restricting my diet so much and it's diminishing returns. Like I've been in the this weight range, it seems like for several, four months. Probably not that long. I just wish it would fall off quicker. That's what I'm saying. So I did uh, talk to my doctor. You know, I felt like I was plateauing, even taking the Manjaro. What the Manjaro does help. You know, every Wednesday I take an injection in my stomach and, and then for at least the next three or four days after that, like some days I'll even forget to eat. So it makes, really suppresses your appetite. But it, not, not enough apparently. So then she tried to, well first she said I had to speak to a nutritionist for six months until she would prescribe anything in addition to the Manjaro. So I had to go once a month, talk to a, a dietitian on a, just a telehealth appointment. And it was so pointless. So this dietitian, it was like HEB sponsored dietitian or something. <laughs> and it was basically, so HEB is here everything's better and that's like a chain of grocery stores here in Texas. It's probably the most popular chain when Randall's is probably second. So I, I, this, is, this is pretty much how the, uh, the dietitian telehealth appointments went. So, oh, here, I made you a list of some things. So here we have H-E-B protein spaghetti. If you wanted to try that, it's, it's, low, it's high in fiber and protein and has less refined carbs. And here H-E-B makes this uh, whole grain bread. And here H-E-B makes, it, it was basically like an H-E-B food advertisement. I'd have to sit for half hour listening to all the things that H-E-B is selling. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, this is so pointless. I just have to sit through a advertisement, a, a 30 minute long commercial for H-E-B every month. Uh, and eventually, I, I think I only went to two of those. So I went to two of them. And then after six months, my doctor thought that I'd done, done talked to a dietitian for six months, which I stopped after two because it was completely pointless. And then after six months, she prescribed me a fentramine, which fentramine you know, is related to the fen fen. It might be actually the same actual thing from like the 90s and it was causing heart attacks in people. And I started taking it, and I really didn't notice anything. I thought it was going to be like taking, like, you know, like some kind of upper where you'd feel like you're buzzing, like an overdose caffeine or something. But I really didn't feel any, any, uh, metabolism boosting effects or, uh, didn't feel like I was on speed <laughs> didn't get any kind of effect like that but after taking it for like three or four days I started getting like chest pains <clears throat> and it's it's related to heart problems it can cause certain problems with valves in your heart and this was only after taking it a few days maybe it was partly psychological because I had you know, read about the medication and read it could do stuff to your heart. Maybe it was just psychological heart pains. Because <laughs> if you believe something could happen, then it can happen. The power of belief. 
it's the same way that uh, placebo medications work. So that's a very fascinating topic that we can talk about after I talk about my weight loss medications. So, um, so yeah, I stopped taking it. I told her, and I told her that I stopped taking it because it gave me diarrhea. I didn't want to tell her that it gave me chest pains because then she would freak out and want me to go see a heart specialist and blah, blah, blah. When, and, and if I still had heart pains, like the chest pains after I stopped taking it, I would definitely go see a heart specialist. But, you know, since I stopped taking it, I've not had that at all. So it was definitely the medication that was causing it. So then I actually suggested a medication. I think it's Contrave, which is a combination of Bupropren, I think it is. Well, Butrin is one of the brand names of the drug. And that's, I've taken that before. I took it probably 20 years ago to help me quit smoking. And it's also like an antidepressant, so mood lifter. And then another effect of it is it can increase metabolism and promote weight loss. So she prescribed, well, the Contrave is a combination of that medicine and the other one, the other medication that's combined with was like naltrexone or something, which is actually like a, they give it to opioid, uh, you know, people addicted to heroin and it helps suppress the reward center in your brain that like gives you a dopamine hit whenever you you know would take drugs or another one is it helps alcoholics stop drinking <sighs> because when you're an addict and you embark on taking whatever it is you're addicted to your brain rewards you for that to try to get you to do more of it so every time you use it every time you take heroin or drink alcohol for an alcoholic you get a reward makes you feel good and then that makes you want to do it more in, in the future and so the same thing happens to people that are like food addicts which i've said many times in the past i'm a food addict and it's you know it's more than just eating food just because you have to eat some food to not die with me it's like eating food is a pleasurable experience and I don't want to stop doing it when I start you know if I start eating a large pizza most people can eat a slice or two and be like oh that's enough pizza or me I keep eating the pizza until the whole pizza is gone <clears throat> so this now rexone is supposed to inhibit the reward centers in your brain that reward you for for engaging in your addictions and then combine that with wellbutrin <clears throat> for a mood lifter and a metabolism booster and it's supposed to be pretty effective. It's supposed to lose like 10% of your body weight like in a year. At least that's what like studies show, five to 10% weight loss in a year, which for me, that would be 26 pounds. I could definitely, I'd definitely like to lose 26 pounds. <clears throat> I'd like to lose more than that. Really, I don't have a goal weight. It's more like I have a goal body composition just not just be uh, proud of what I'm seeing in the mirror where I'm I am less ashamed now <laughs> compared to what I was at 350 like at 350 going to a swimming pool 
it was like a shameful experience. We're now at like 265. I'm not proud, but I'm way less embarrassed. So I'm moving in the less embarrassed direction to being more proud. Hello. Yeah, that guy was breathing weird. <laughs> uh. So anyway, they prescribed this. Well, I asked her, like, because this contrave medication, they take two medications that were generic and then combine them together. And now it's a proprietary name brand drug that they charge like $100 a month for. <laughs> Combining two generic medications that you could buy $8 for each of them, and they're making it $100, which is some BS, because they're just medications that have been around like forever. So then she tried to, she, I talked to her, I'm like, well, instead of just prescribing this name brand Contrave, can we prescribe just the generic medications that it's combining and just make our own concoction of Contrave? So she prescribed the Wellbutrin and this now Rexone or whatever. It was actually a different name. And it, it so then uh, the, the Wellbutrin prescription was fine. That one got filled. But then the now Rexone one, the pharmacist said, oh, they stopped making this medication. So it's the generic form of the medication, they stopped making it. So there's definitely like conspiracy going on. <laughs> like, why would you stop making the generic medication? <clears throat> and it's probably because they got bought out by the people that made Contrave. I've not looked into this, but this is my conspiracy theory. <clears throat> they buy out the rights to make the generic form of this drug. And then they put it into this Contrave, which is name brand that they could charge $100 a month for. And now you can't get the generic version. You have to buy their $100 a month version. <sighs> That's what I think is going on. It's a conspiracy. So now I've just been taking the Wellbutrin part. I did tell my doctor that they don't even make that medication anymore. And she said she would get back to me and see if there was any other alternatives for that part of it that I could take. Uh, but even just the Wellbutrin part, I've been taking for, I think this is the first week. Friday will be a week. And I'm feeling good. I don't know if I feel, I think I do feel a little boost in metabolism. Like it feels like I've been warmer. I had to turn my air conditioning down in my house. So it feels like just my body is running warmer. So that could be a sign of my metabolism working at a faster rate. Or it can mean I'm having hot flashes from menopause. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Uh, I mean, we're already at an hour. Guess that, and what? We're at three, three point four seven miles. I'll definitely be I'll be over seven miles total for my daily walk today. When I go back, it'll probably be pretty getting dark. The sun's setting like right about now. All right, so so the other topic. Yeah. Uh, oh man, just the, just my shorts. 
So I was going to talk about uh, placebos, the placebo effect, which shouldn't shouldn't even be a thing. I don't, I don't remember why they called it placebo. But maybe I'll put a little fun fact on the screen about why it's called that. But basically the placebo effect is like when they do trials with medications they'll have like 100 people come in and to be able to control to see if the medication is actually effective they'll give like half the people the medication and then the other half of the people they'll just give something that shouldn't do anything so just like a sugar pill so those half the people that are taking a sugar pill like if, if you're taking a pill for say uh, lowering your cholesterol <laughs> then like a placebo there's something in the woods Like a placebo shouldn't do anything. You'd expect those 50 people that took a sugar pill, their cholesterol wouldn't do anything. It'd be exactly the same because taking a sugar pill doesn't do anything. <laughs> but nobody knows whether they're getting the sugar pill or whether they're getting this cutting edge medication that lowers your cholesterol. So, a certain amount of the people that take the placebo will have like a reduction in cholesterol or whatever the drug's for. It could be a drug that is used to treat psoriasis or any, anything. You see the placebo, there's no area of where they give someone a medication that the placebo effect is, shows no result. There's always a certain amount of people that show improvements in whatever the pill is supposed to be for treatment. You know, it could be for, um, you know, if you have a high heart rate, this medication sh should lower your heart rate or this medication should lower your blood sugar and they'll give a, a sugar pill saying that it will lower your blood sugar and, and a certain amount of people that take the sugar pill, the placebo, it will actually lower their blood sugar. When you're giving someone a sugar pill, it should raise your blood sugar. <laughs> but they believe that the pill will lower their blood sugar and it's just the power of that belief that it happens. So what your mind believes it can make real to a certain extent like this is not full-blown matrix stuff that if you believe you could fly you could fly but you can manifest things in reality just by believing that they'll happen which is crazy and that it's scientifically proven if you look at any any study of any medication, they always do like a, a placebo. And the people that take the placebo always show some improvement. It should be, it should be zero. Like if it wasn't true that what you believe will happen can happen, every single tr medication trial, the placebo should do absolutely nothing. But that's never the case. There's always a placebo effect. So that's crazy. And that's also, I think, what relates to uh, like faith healing in religions. Where you know, you pray for someone to heal some sickness or and people my, my cousin actually had 
a tumor in his brain, his frontal frontal lobe. It actually was pushing against his eye. And it was, I think it was like the size of a golf ball. <clears throat> and they were going to have to do brain surgery. And he went, like, my family's very religious. And they're like, we don't want to do surgery yet. We want to pray and ask God to heal him. And, you know, he'd go to church and everyone would pray for him. And he believed that he would be healed. And I, th I think it was like within a year, he went back and like had x-rays and the tumor was completely gone. So, was that God, an invisible being in, th in th the universe that made some interaction from the great beyond and removed the tumor from his brain? Or was it the fact that he believed that God would do that? You know, it's, it's not so much what you believe will do it, it's the actual belief. You could believe that a pill, this is a, uh, this is a brain tumor elimination pill. And you give them a brain tumor elimination pill and within a year it could be gone because he believes that this brain tumor elimination pill will remove the tumor. Or believe that God will remove the tumor. I think it's just the, the belief itself that is what does it. It's, the, it's you yourself, your, your mind, and your belief that it will happen, that your mind can manifest it in reality. <clears throat> That's what I believe. I'm sure my mom's listening to this thinking I'm a heretic <laughs> because obviously it was God came out of heaven and pulled it out of his brain but that doesn't explain placebo medications did God come out of heaven when people take a sugar pill and make them uh, make them have the effect that the doctor said the pill should have like what does that what does that have to do with God? And you still get the same kind of power of belief effect that whatever you think will heal you or have some effect will just because you believe it. And then there's people that there's the opposite of a placebo is, is true as well. <clears throat> so there's per doubters, doubters and uh, skeptics. Like you could take a pill that is proven to say, I don't know, whatever it is, cure psoriasis. And it cures psoriasis in 90% of the people that take it. But you don't believe that it will. And because you don't believe that it will, it won't. And I think that's called like a nocebo effect. I think it's nocebo. So the same is true for placebos in the positive as it is for nocebos in the negative. Believing something won't work. You know, whatever, whatever you believe, it manifests in reality. And that, I think, transpires to just overall people's attitudes where I know people that have just a total negative outlook on life and negative things happen in their life because it's almost like, you know, I'm never going to get this promotion. I'm, you know, you, you, you and then you don't. I'm never going to get it, and then they don't. But the people are like, I'm going to get this promotion even if they're not as qualified as the person that don't think they're going to get it. It's like the po the positive energy and the positive attraction, and and I know it gets into like mystical woo type area, and some people take it to an extreme, 
but there is some kind of effect like that where whatever you believe becomes real one hundred percent all right well that was three point nine five miles and it took me an hour and seven minutes and then I gotta walk back and do it again but I'm not taking you with me I'm gonna call my mama <laughs> So, thanks for hanging out with me, and I hope you enjoyed uh, an episode where I didn't talk the whole time about Bitcoin in Bangkok. It took a lot of effort for me to do that, so I hope you appreciate it. I probably couldn't do it two episodes in a row. <laughs> so, thanks for watching, and uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you later. Take it easy.